I, there are moments where I'm a CEO and then there are moments when I'm in my little heart of hearts, I'm a marketing person. So I get very excited about, you know, like, oh, it has so much meaning. Welcome to Marketing Conversations with Lamp House Films, the show that gives you direct access to tips and insights from today's marketing thought leaders. Our passion in our films and on the show is helping companies create marketing that's honest, beautiful, and effective. In this episode, I'm talking to Jen Grant, the CEO of Appify, a company that builds custom apps to suit businesses' needs. Before taking the reins at Appify, Jen was marketing manager at Google and the CMO at companies like Looker and Elastic. Make sure to click the link in the description to get more marketing content right in your inbox. How did you get into marketing in the first place? Like, why was that your, did you just like a five-year-old going to kindergarten and think, I want to be a CMO? (laughs) That is such a good question. So as a five-year-old and even in high school, I always wanted to be an actress. That was my thing. So it was musicals and choir and whatever, you know, singing and acting. And even when I graduated from college, I spent the first year out of college acting. And I think what happened was the realization that it actually, you don't make very much money. (laughs) They really get you with that one. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, I sort of just didn't, it wasn't the life. It was sort of repeating the same show again and again and again. And I lost the creativity for me. Yeah. And so, so when I kind of shifted my career at the time, I was super interested in technology and I started doing project management. I was in customer support. I answered phones. And when is this? And this was in 1996. Uh, okay, cool. I'm just, when you say <laughs> really into te- <laughs> when you say really into technology, that like, I mean, in 96 means something very different than in 98, even <laughs> like technology is moving so fast. It's moving so fast. And yeah, it was 96, 97, 98. And then I was like, oh my God, there's this revolution. I want to be a part of it. Mm. And it was at that time I went back to business school and I had this epiphany that my love of technology and all this exciting innovation and my love of creativity and Mm. the theater and performance and that those things actually fit together really well in marketing. So it was, it was kind of a, you know, this sort of balance of these two things that, that really got me there. So, and then, you know, from there, like off I went. (laughs) That was a long 10, 15 year journey from there. (laughs) Yeah. So I feel like it's relatively new, this notion of like, sort of the techie side of marketing. So it seems like that was like, I mean, that was how you approached this from the very beginning. Definitely. Yeah. And I, my sort of first you know, foremost experience was at Google and Google is the techiest of the techie. And they sort of, I I would say in Silicon Valley and, you know, people certainly may disagree with me, but I think the culture of the product sells itself started Mm -hmm. at Google and that culture of effectively marketing does not matter (laughs) Mm. and sort of this, this perception uh, that, oh, well, the, if, if it's a good product, it'll magically be used. Um, and I think there are many product managers and founders who years and years and years came out of Google with that same feeling. And I think, you know, you roll it back and you think about why was Google successful? There were plenty of marketing things that they did mm-hmm. that had to do with, you know, constantly updating the, that search bar. Um, the the home page that it was so clean and different that's positioning that you know, the the way they had the colors on the logo and I don't know if anyone remembers the Google at the bottom that's brand like all of these things are marketing and then unfortunately there was sort of this like oh product sells itself nobody needs marketing for a fair amount of time in the tech industry and I think we've now come full circle where uh, most founders and product folks and the VCs who support them will say, you got to get a product marketing person in here. You've got to get your positioning. Mm. You've got to figure out your product market fit. And it isn't just create a great product and people will magically fall out of the sky and come use it. Um, And so there's, there's been a huge shift in the, in the tech industry around 
I guess, appreciation of the marketing craft. <laughs> and I think it's also just an expanding of what marketing is. Because if you're thinking like, oh, if our product is really great, then we then we won't need to run TV commercials. Like maybe you're right about that. But it's like, yeah, but you still have to pay attention to I think that's the one thing as as we've been doing the show and I've just been able to talk to a bunch of really great marketing minds. It's that that's the thing that I've learned is that people like you almost I come from film. So when I think marketing, I think film or or photo because that's what that's what I do. But it's so it's so interesting that you sort of have to stretch people even to come all the way around to that who are really deep in, you know, I come into companies and I help them with this one piece. But if you're the person who is doing everything at that company, like the film, the photo, like that's such a little piece of it. And yeah. <laughs> so what was it? Um, it Was it just last year that you launched Appify? Am I getting that right? That's right. I joined Appify, believe it or not, February 25th. And we went to this brand new office and we were there for eight days and then we haven't been back since. <laughs> oh been my gosh. Since then. So what what was the thing that made you think like, oh, I now that I've done marketing, you know, it'll be really fun is running a company. Yeah, I, I'd say there are two things. I mean, the first is, as I've been a CMO, sat in, the, in executive meetings, you know, help with the strategy of, of a variety of companies, it occurred to me that the skill of any marketer, so any CMO, the ability to position the company, to kind of crystallize what is the value to a customer, all of that strategic work that a CMO does is very important in the CEO seat. Obviously, as a CEO, there's other things you're doing too, finance and, you know, product and engineering and organization and whatnot. But from a CMO position, a lot of the skills that you need are already things that you're doing as a leader of a team. And so that was one thing. And then the second thing was really, um, uh, so I was at Looker. Looker got bought by Google. I had been at Google 10 years or more prior. Uh, and there was sort of that moment of like, okay, I am in a position now where I could be CEO. And there are not that many women who are CEOs of tech companies. So maybe I should just pony up and get it done. <laughs> just, just do it. Put another name on the list and, you know, continue to push forward the fact that, you know, certainly in Silicon Valley and in the tech world, we need more women in leadership mm -hmm. positions. And, uh, and so th those two things kind of brought me to, okay, this is, this is going to be my next, my next journey. And we'll see if I can find a great company. And that, that's when I started my search. And so uh, Appify, how much does it predate you? Um, Appify was started uh, by the founder in 2017. Okay, so a few years. A few years, yeah. I mean, they built the, pro you know, that was sort of the early, early stage of when mm -hmm. they incorporated. And, and was the founder running it until you? He was, yeah. Okay. He, and, and actually that was, I'd say a critical component of why I went with Appify is mm. um, not only, he, he's previously been successful. He was a founder of a company called ServiceMax, sold that you know, spent 12, 12 years doing that. And then, uh, but also because he's just this good person, this good human, we really got along and he desperately did not want to be the CEO, mm. <laughs> which I think is a very helpful treat <laughs> yeah. when you're bringing in a CEO <laughs> to have that kind of partnership and that kind of, you know, okay, we're going to do this together, but you're the boss and I'm super happy that you're the boss. <laughs> yeah. 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 I get that. So I think Appify, you know, it's a relatively young company. Here you are coming from the world of marketing. We already talked a little bit about how um, people are, are, are sort of starting to understand the importance of marketing and the importance of brand. Um, and here you are entering into a company that has a really, really great brand and that is still pretty young. And one thing that, that I find is that a lot of CEOs are sort of coming from this place. And I didn't really identify it as an old school mentality until this conversation, but they're coming from this place of like, oh, we're gonna hit X milestone and then we're gonna start thinking about brand. Yeah. So can you speak to that a little bit? Like what what is it about, um, I, I mean, obviously you come from that world and so it's gonna be important to you, but why is it that you feel like that mindset is is outdated? Yeah, and I think I for so many reasons. <laughs> 
<laughs> where to where to start? No, uh, I I think what the first piece of it is your positioning in the marketplace helps people crystallize on why they should care about your product. Mm. And if you don't get that positioning correct, you're kind of never going to stand out from the crowd. And as much as, you know, we'd love to think that there are industries where there's no competition and nobody else possibly had thought of this idea and created a product around it, it's very unlikely to be the case. There's always going to be competition. And so to be able to, you know, from a brand position, say our brand is about this and this as different from everyone else. I think mm -hmm. that's a critical component. And then I think the second thing is, you know, when I look at my um, past companies and kind of some of the important things they did, one of the early uh, pushes that Box did was actually in the brand, in the, mm -hmm. the thought leadership that our CEO, Aaron Levy, would talk all the time about the future and what it looked like and the cloud and it's going to be amazing this future world um and we supported that with you know not just the the press and and that but also with videos and this sort of very fun company we we did lots of crazy things some worked some did not in the early days we had t-shirts that said no sharepoint uh we went to some uh we went to a conference where i think sharepoint was the the biggest donor or sponsor <laughs> walking around with their little no SharePoint t-shirts. But all of those things, when you're a small, that you've taken a position, you've kind of done some fun things and you've caught the attention mm. of enough people that then, okay, now eventually we're going to put in sort of the traditional demand gen uh, kind of building blocks of marketing, but we've already developed this sort of, awareness that we're here, mm -hmm. that we're different and we're, you know, a little bit quirky. So people notice us. And I think that was very, very effective in the case uh, of Box. And, you know, every company that I've been at, we've had the, you know, the rebrand conversation. In fact, um, the, oh. hmm. the, of all the, almost every company I have led some sort of rebrand, even if it's small. So hmm. I was at Elastic, it was originally called Elastic Search. And it was like, we need to be more inclusive, okay. But you can see what we did with the name there. Mm -hmm. Like that was a little bit of what I think you yeah. said is this caution. You can't just run away from uh, whatever you've built so far, but can you slightly adjust it? That is so interesting. I, I feel like there is this brand evolution where you start off Elasticsearch or Apple right. computers or right. Lamp House Films, and then eventually you drop the descriptor when everybody knows what you're doing. Right. And then every once in a while, a company gets to the point where they drop the name and they just become the logo. Like yeah. Nike and yeah. Apple have done this. Like they don't like have Nike and Apple, that's right. <laughs> anyway, that's interesting. So even there, there was a, there was a bit of a rebrand. Exactly, yeah. And at Box, we were Box.net. And then mm. finally, we, that one we always wanted to be Box.com. It was just a matter of buying the domain. Yeah. <laughs> But when we did, we were like, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and in the case of, of Appify, we were originally called Turbo Systems. And I, mm. think, I think even, you know, this is one of those when you start a company and you're kind of like, I don't know, let's call it something. And then you just sort of do the domain search and like, here's mm -hmm. a name. Um, and I think there were so many funny things about Turbo Systems. There's, a, there's like a vacation pass in Europe. So we would get calls about the Turbo Pass. Uh, and there's a lot of car companies uh, use the word turbo in the name. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> so there was just, it just was not, and yes, it said, you know, fast. So that's uh -huh. good. You know, that's part of our value and our brand prop. But at the same time, it didn't really say what, you know, it didn't really help say what we, we did. Yeah. And, and, you know, when we, and in the case of, of Appify, it was one of those situations where I felt like, you know what, we're early enough in our mm. marketing and sales effort. We've spent a lot of time building the product, but not a lot of time in sales and marketing yet. So it felt like, you know, there's a little bit of brand um, awareness that we would leave behind, but it was not a lot. We were yeah. not, and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. you know, it, there comes a point where, okay, if you're gonna do it, we better do it now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was a lot of what brought us to Appify. And then there was this moment when it really was, we found the domain for Appify, it was free, we couldn't believe it. And it so perfectly explains what we do. You know, we, mm -hmm. we make it easy. We're a platform that makes it easy to create apps. And we amplify your existing systems. So this whole like Appify is kind of amplify. You know, it's one of those that 
I, there are moments where I'm a CEO and then there are moments when I'm in my little heart of hearts, a marketing person. So I get very excited about, you know, like, oh, it has so much meaning. Uh, and then there's, you know, the, the moment where, oh, we get to make a new logo. Yes. You know, <laughs> it's, I called it, to, I told the team, I said, this is a little bit like my candy. I shouldn't be eating it, but I'm eating a little bit. I'm going to enjoy this rebrand because I love this kind of stuff. Uh, and then I'll try to step out and not micromanage the marketing team anymore. <laughs> so when was that that you, got, that you guys did that? So the, it was this summer. So we started okay. in July cool. and, you know, so it was, it was pretty, pretty recent, mm. relatively speaking. Uh, and, you know, had a fun time kind of creating uh, stuff to get the cu current customers kind of on board we had a little yeah. customer box we sent everyone with hats and you oh, know cool. all, again it's my little marketing heart it's like uh -huh. oh, this uh -huh. is the fun part of marketing <laughs> yeah so and and it was very successful i think people uh love the name it makes a lot of sense um we love our new brand um and we've never looked back i don't think there's been a single person mm. Uh, who went, oh, well, why would you do that? <laughs> Everyone was like, oh, this makes so much sense. <laughs> so when you when you came into the to the company, were you like re a rebrand is something that's going to happen guaranteed? Or is that something that you guys sort of came around to? I came around to it because I think like you, they're dangerous. Um, mm -hmm. There's a there was a company we used to compete with when I was at Box that changed their name. And it was the worst choice of name. I believe the original name was something very clear, like share file. Uh, which is mm. like, that's what you do. You share a file. And they uh -huh. rebranded to Hightail. And Hightail was such a bizarre choice. And I remember thinking like, I'm not sure that's a positive word. Yeah. I think that's kind of negative. Like you <laughs> Hightail it yeah. out of town. Uh -huh. and, and it's not like a, anyway. So, and so that's, you know, that's the risk is that you, yeah. you know, and maybe you even pay a, an agency to come up with a name like that, mm -hmm. which they may have done. Uh, and so there's, you know, there's always that risk of either you get it wrong or, you know, you leave behind a lot of the brand awareness that you've so built and it's been hard to mm -hmm. build. So, so as you were sort of figuring that out, like coming to the realization that you guys needed to rebrand, what were the, what were the signs? What were the, like, I get the risks, but what was it that made you think, okay, yeah, you know what, we've got to do this. Yeah, there was certainly all the funny calls of people going like, oh, are you a car company? <laughs> that, was, that was a little like, oh. And then I think, you know, the founder, Hari, really just didn't love the name, even though it was, mm. you know, his fault. <laughs> he picked it. <laughs> uh, but, and so he sort of constantly would say, mm. are you sure Turbo's the right name? And I'd say, well, uh, interesting. you know, as a as a CM, any CMO might say, I can make anything work. There's a yeah. certain, you know, like we can make it work. Mm -hmm. But then there's the, the moment of like, but if we did find something that better communicated what we did, that actually would be really useful um, just from a growth and awareness perspective. And I, mm. so I think that was part of it, this constant like, hmm, maybe this isn't the right name. And then I think the third thing is finding the name that felt so perfect for mm. what we were trying to communicate that we do. And I think that was sort of the, you know, the tipping point of like, yeah, okay, this is the right thing. We need to do this. So it was sort of like this gut feeling of like, I'm not sure this is right. And it wasn't until you found the right thing that you were like, okay, yep, yeah, we're, we're, we're moving. Yeah, we never did sort of the traditional step back and okay, we got to do a rebrand. Let's get an agency to you know, do the hoop de la mm -hmm. around who we are and whatnot. I mean, it was, it was much more of a slow kind of, okay, I think we can live with it. And then, okay, no, this name is better. <laughs> so did you end up working with an agency at all? Or did you guys just do it in house? We never did. We, well, really? we, we came up with the name in house and then we brought the agency in to like to design the, logo, the brand, yeah. the design. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. We real quick, so funny. So we're called we're called Lamp House Films, and we have this. It, it that doesn't necessarily like elicit in the way that it, your old name was elicited like cars for some reason. But we do on occasion. We at one time had this older guy stumble into our office looking to buy a lamp, <laughs> and so we explained to him like, "Hey, sorry, we're a film company. We don't sell lamps." And he was like, "Okay." 
but listen. And then he went on for a long time to explain what type of lamp he wanted. I'm like, did you think that you're going to explain this to me? And I'm going to be like, okay, you know what? That kind of lamp we sell. <laughs> anyway, so when you when you guys made the shift to, to Appify, um, <clears throat> I, I like what you said earlier where it's like, as a marketing person, you can sort of make any brand work. Like I have some friends in graphic design who are like, people say, oh, I just want something with the power of the Nike swoosh. And it's like, the power of the Nike swoosh does not come from the Nike swoosh. It comes from <laughs> Nike. Like think <laughs> and, any and history. Brand, yes. It's like any, any symbol could have eventually gotten to that degree of power. And so I, I get it. Sometimes, you know what, this, this, name isn't working it's time to rebrand it's time to you know get a new logo whatever but now that you're here what are the things that you're doing to give it the gravitas that it needs How, what are you doing to make it amazing right right no that's exactly right and i think you know it goes back to kind of the core building blocks of a company no. which are you know the majority of which are the core building blocks of any marketing team it's the okay, how do we make sure that we clearly position the product so that people know, okay, this is something mm. that I need. Um, and then how do we make sure the brand represents something that we're proud of, that this brand in our case represents, you know, powerful enterprise software, this sort of mm. innovation of a no code technology, you know, what, whatever we end up with from a tagline perspective, mm -hmm. how do we make that clear? Um, and then I think the final thing is making sure, and, and this is, of course, really the core of Nike and Apple, is how people experience the products as they use mm -hmm. them. So, yeah. you know, it's the using of the Apple computers and the iPhone and, and those things that really build the brand of like, oh, this, is, this technology just works. It's beautiful. I feel good when I use it. I feel like I'm fancy, you know, all mm -hmm. of the things that make that brand. And so how do we make sure that our customers experience have the things that we want to imbue in it, which is in our case, you know, that it's powerful, that it solves their problems, and that we are a company that really supports them in the process. Um, and so that's, you know, that's a bigger than just a tagline. That is the whole company really embracing kind of our brand positioning and then delivering that to customers. It's so interesting that we started the conversation in, if you have a really great product, it'll sell itself. And, and really, it's like almost... It's like almost true, but it just, it's like, it needs to come full circle because, because when you, when you embed the brand so deeply into the product, now it sells itself. That's right. Right. That's right. Exactly. Mm. Because the experience is so great. I think uh, one great example, one of our biggest competitors when I was at Box was Dropbox and mm. Dropbox did an amazing in product branding mm -hmm. because the experience, once you use Dropbox, and it just worked. And oh my gosh, my files are synced, you know, in all of my different devices. I feel so great. Uh, and then they said, okay, now share it and we'll give you some extra storage. Mm. Like brilliant marketing. Obviously, you know, in Box's case, that was one of the reasons that we shifted from being a consumer focused product to going deeply after business mm. and saying, we're secure, we're enterprise grade, yeah. we're all the things that are not Dropbox. Uh, because we needed to position away from what they had built, which was this glorious user experience that really did build. They had millions. They, you know, their their consumer users grew much much faster than ours at Box, which is fine because we said, okay, we're focused on the enterprise. We're focused on the Fortune 500. You know, we're going to go after business uh, and shift and sort of position in that way. But the, you know, there are plenty of products that are able to kind of achieve what Dropbox did, and and it really is that branding in the product. Thanks for watching another episode of Marketing Conversations with Lamphouse Films. Jen gave us a lot of great practical insight in that conversation, but there's more that we couldn't squeeze into the episode. So make sure to click the link in the description to sign up for our bonus content and be on the lookout for an extended interview with Jen.